welcome everyone to our finale of the 2020 uh, fall semester College Town Class series. College Town Class is the Civic Leadership Alumni Skillshare, and I am so excited to introduce one of the community members of our alumni group, Vanessa Barksdale, who was a participant in Leadership Class 7 and a graduate from UMBC who is leading today's class. And before I pass the mic over to her, just some Zoom housekeeping as uh, you all are familiar with. I just need to do it so I won't forget for the next class. Um, I need to make a muscle memory with my uh, Zoom reminders. Please remain on mute, myself included. My lovely construction uh, soundtrack in the background um, will be very distracting as Vanessa goes through her presentation. So unless invited to um, speak or if you have a question, uh, remain on mute otherwise. I see you've updated your name to include your preferred pronouns. Thank you for doing so, uh, Kay and Molly. That'll help discussion if um, Vanessa calls on folks, et cetera. And then uh, last but certainly not least, the chat is an active feature. So if you'd like to chime in in that capacity, please feel free to do so. I will be monitoring that for Vanessa, um, but happy to collect questions uh, for her toward the end of her presentation. And lastly, 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 I already said lastly, this is the last thing for real. Uh, this session is being recorded to be featured on the College Town YouTube channel. So um, although this is a small group now, it, could, it is uh, being shared with the masses on the YouTube machine after the fact. So um, thank you for participating. And without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Vanessa to lead today's discussion. Discussion, thanks so much. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I am super excited to be having this conversation with you guys. I am bursting. Um, and I also want to make sure since there's um, only a few of us today, which is very exciting, we have a, um, a discourse instead of me monologuing too. So feel free to um, ask as many questions as you want. Um, I won't buy it, I promise. I do promise. Um, and there are lots of questions. I realize they're going to be a little more free form. I was going to, Maddie, I know I said that I wanted to do a poll. Realize it doesn't make sense. So yeah, um, let me go ahead and share my screen with you all. So you can see what's, so you can see what I see, yeah. Um, whew, how do I do that? Okay. Never mind, figure it out. Perfect. Great. Um, so I uh, wanted to start off with uh, telling you guys a little bit of a story, um, but also as an overview, uh, tell you why this is something that's so important to me. Um, I had the opportunity to work with um, a political campaign in uh, Waterloo, Iowa. And in Waterloo, uh, my, uh, the family that I stayed with, I was originally terrified, absolutely terrified to, to stay with them. And I was almost, it's not going to at all. Um, I, I came from the DC area and uh, came from uh, Baltimore to like this really, really, really tiny town across the country in Waterloo, Iowa <laughs> to see, to meet these people that I've literally never met before, to live in his house for six months. And I, as a black woman, and I, as someone who's never met this person before, I had literally so many assumptions of what I thought the, what I thought the relationship was going to be, what I thought that he thought about me, what I thought that he thought about Baltimore, what I thought that, what, you see what I'm saying? What I thought that he thought our relationship was going to be like, what I thought that he valued, what I thought that, that um, the experience was going to be. And, I, and I realized that I was doing a lot more thinking about what he was thinking than allowing him to speak for himself. <laughs> And I, I, a lot of the fears and a lot of the worries that I had um, coming, showing up in that relationship came from me speaking for him 
instead of allowing him to to share his feelings and his thoughts and his and um, how he feels about people. Um, and, and as it turns out, I uh, <laughs> um, I am now like absolutely great friends with the person that I, that I stayed with. Um, he's absolutely lovely lovely man named Jack, uh, who knew I could be the best of friends with a, with a 70 year old man from Waterloo, Iowa, but, um, but here I am. Um, and so I learned so much from being able to uh, just let other, A, letting other people speak for themselves and letting other people um, uh, have an opportunity to share, to share their feelings and their beliefs and their ideas with you, as opposed to um, interjecting what you what you think and what you expect for them to say and what you think and what you expect for them to think. Um, and uh, being able to have a common understanding and a common vision, a common ground of values. Um, and once I've, I've discovered that once you, be, once you realize that you have a lot more in common than you have, than you might possibly have, um, as differences, then then certain hard conversations get a lot easier, and certain hard conversations get a lot um, make a lot more sense and flow a lot more smoothly. Um, so, but that that is why it is so 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 important to me to uh, lead with your values and um, and having difficult uh, and having difficult conversations, as well as uh, in this particular particular conversation. That is what we are going to do, lead with our values too. Um, and so uh, one of the really cute things about the campaign that I used to work on was we um, had like 10 core values that are that we abided by on the um, on the trail. And like that was uh, um, that was quite literally a metric for how they judged my work. Um, <laughs> And so uh, then when, when I had a review with my boss, he was like, well, you know, we, we need to work on this. We need to work on that. That's um, that, that particular thing, like really cultivated belonging or Ooh, we need to, we need to, et cetera. So um, that is, so let's us um, difficult conversations obviously go a lot smooth, a lot more smooth when you start with respecting the other person <laughs> which might be so which might be like that's a very that's a very simple concept but um it can't be understated how uh important it is to lead with that and lead with that concept in mind um you obviously you can't you can't control how the other, how the other person that you're talking to shows up in the conversation, but what you certainly can control is how you show up. Um, and so this was, and this is just the like how we describe respect uh, on the campaign. I, and I just thought that was a really, really eloquent and beautiful way to put this particular idea. Um, specifically, uh, specifically this line, uh, the better we hold, this value up among ourselves, the better it reflects outside and it will represent a quiet antidote to the idea that this project is too audacious to be taken seriously. Um, so the idea that like you can have a healthy, reasonable conversation with a Democrat as a Republican or vice versa, the idea that you can have a healthy, reasonable conversation with someone who um, voted completely differently than you that is a, uh, a lot of people are like, that's crazy. That is a, an absolutely audacious idea, but respect is an antidote to that. And, and so that's why we hold this up so clearly. Um, belonging, um, leading with belonging too, and, and knowing that um, a lot of friction and a lot of friction in relationships and a lot of friction in the conversations that, that we have with our family, our friends, um, et cetera, comes, sometimes comes out of a feeling of I, um, of being othered, of being othered and not feeling like you, like they care, not feeling like the other person is including you and the other person like actually um, finds value in your feelings and, and the specific things that you're going through at this moment. Um, so belonging is uh, just laying that, 
valuing the idea of belonging, knowing the other, and making sure the other person knows that you actually care about them and you want and you want to preserve the relationship with them is really important too. Um, and also just understanding that like not everyone, not everyone is the same as you. Not ever, not every single person has the exact same ideas as you, but that's okay. <laughs> there's a um, the the there's a diversity of thought as well as uh, as well as uh, ideal as well as um, race as well as religion as well as education in this country too. And it's okay. We're um, it's actually valuable. So. Substance, having substantive conversations <laughs> instead of in have actual meaningful substantive conversations with people instead of calling them names. <laughs> having actual meaningful substantive conversations about ideas instead of instead of criticizing their appearance or instead of um, instead of using petty quips to describe the other person. Um, will get you a lot farther in these, in these types of uh, conversation and this type of discourse. Um, so that's a really important, one of the reasons why we lead with that too. Last but not least, being honest. <laughs> being honest with uh, not, only, not only the other person, but with yourself uh, and what you're saying and what it is that you're saying, of course, and also why it is that you're saying it. And if perhaps, there may be something that you're missing, or there may be there may be a bias or a hole in what you see that is uh, missing in this conversation. Um, so uh, that's something that's very important to be able to to point out because uh, there are our beliefs are glued together by a lot of biases. <laughs> A lot, a lot, a lot of biases, which are, which is what we're going to talk about next. Um, mm, 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 mm. In understanding how our beliefs are formed. No, the other person is not crazy. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not crazy. They're not weird. They're not like um, absolutely ridiculous. Oh my gosh, they just think differently. Um, and all of our beliefs are comprised of a myriad of different elements glued, all glued together by logic, as flawed as that logic may be. Um, and those, uh, and those elements are comprised of our community and group bias. Uh, I, um, as a really good example, I live in a city called Brandywine, Maryland, um, Brandywine, Maryland is in Prince George's County, Maryland. Prince George's County is predominantly Black. It is predominantly Democratic. It is um, pretty uh, economically diverse, but also uh, ideologically very, very, very uh, one track. <laughs> one, uh, one track. I'm talking like a, a 89.7 to um margin to a 9.7 to um going for president joe biden or president like joe biden to six percent for trump like that like that level of um ide ideologically homogenous um but then so there are things there are perspectives that i have to be honest with myself and saying you know what i may be uh missing some stuff i may i don't think about what it's like to, I don't, uh, for example, in thinking about um, the climate and having a conversation about the climate crisis, I don't particularly think about coal that much. It doesn't come up in my mind. It only comes up like twice a week on the news, maybe. I, that's not something that crosses my mind. Um, nor, I don't know, wildfires, unless I turned on the news and saw, saw it happening in some town other than mine. Um, and so I, it's very easy for me to think, oh, like, why don't you, um, I don't understand how someone else can, uh, for example, want to keep the coal industry, um, keep the coal industry moving in a country 
because I know literally no coal miners <laughs> or I don't understand why someone or why someone like would want to be so concerned with fires because I know literally no people that have been affected by a, a, a house fire. Um, so, you know, that's just, and that's just something that you have to be mindful of, honestly. Um, personality, uh, you, I'm stubborn. I just am, I'm sorry, <laughs> working on it. But, um, but I'm, but that's just something that I have to just be mindful of that sometimes I can just be uh, really set in my ways. Um, as with, as with all people. And so you just have to be like, really 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 introspective of how you are showing up in this conversation are you stubborn are you actually stubborn are you open-minded are you kind of um insular to yourself and therefore don't understand like uh the uh, contours of how the um perhaps quarantines for example um how quarantines affect people who may not be as um, insulin to yourself as you are. There are just different aspects of like beliefs and ideas that you just need to be um, mindful of that are reflected by how you are and how your personality is uh, adding to that conversation. As of course, with your values, as of course, um, and with your values and how they show up in your beliefs and how your understanding of data and your polarization of data, that also contributes to the things that you believe or don't believe to. Um, the, the political, um, the news landscape of our country um, is so like starkly, uh, so polarized and like so starkly like night and day black and white in this country that it almost feels like we are looking at like two different worlds and two different perspectives of the exact same information, the exact same data. Uh, and, and so that's just something that's just very important to be mindful of that you then you may be like, duh, everyone knows that or duh, why don't you like, why don't you think that that was in the paper, that was in the news? Uh, not so fast, not everyone reads the same news as you. <laughs> not everyone has the same understanding of data. And so therefore, um, you can say like, duh, why don't you think that? Everyone should think that because everyone knows that. That's not true. Not everyone sees the same things as you too. So that's very important. Um, so all of these, but all of these elements uh, that we're talking about are, um, are glued to, um, are glued together by logic. <laughs> and so if you say to yourself, and, and so to, you say to yourself, uh, for example, in the um, idea of a quarantine, um, there are some there are some people that believe. Uh, I think the I think making people stay at home, and I think making people quarantine is silly, and I think that's dumb. And people should be able to go out as much as they want, whenever they want. And I don't. And the government shouldn't tell you. Um, like whether you should stay at home or not. <laughs> that is something that, uh, that is something in the, in the grim, that is, that is a belief um, that is based in part by their, your community, the people that feel the same way as you, your personality, if you're a particularly a more independent person or if you're a more like um, community focused person like what you value, independence, uh, self-determination, et cetera. But also there is there is logic that is glue that is gluing all these ideas about your community, your personality, your values, et cetera. Um, the, the, I, the idea, there is logic in saying um, independence is connected to going, independence is connected to going outside whenever I want. Um, self-determination is connected to um, engaging or what I, how I choose to uh, show up in the public health conversation or choose not to show up in the public health conversation. Um, you can, there's a, there's a logic in deciding, um, oh, if, if I do this, 
that means that, or if I do this, that does not mean that, or this is connected to that. So, and sometimes we as human beings, we have flawed logic. And we sometimes uh, think stuff that actually doesn't really make sense if you if you really like piece it apart. So um, that is perfectly okay too. And that's perfectly okay. This, that's why we have this conversation. So we can kind of think through our, our ideas and say, does that actually make sense? Does that really make sense? Why am I doing this? Like, why am I having this? Why am I, why am I, why do I think like this? Or why am I saying this? So, um, but moving forward, my favorite part, um, I'm actually going to switch gears a little bit because this requires me to type. Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> So building an empathetic bridge. Um, this is really important uh, to me because there are a lot of different aspects of um, being able to engage with other, like being able to have a really meaningful, substantive, healthy conversation with people that we don't really think about. Um, but uh, before, like before I jump into this, I wanted to like just ask you guys the question really quickly. Um, So think of one person in your life that thinks uh, differently from you politically, uh, politically or otherwise. Um, when was the last time you talked to them and how would you describe that conversation in one word? Feel free to hop off mute. You can say whatever you'd like. Because we're going to, we're going to figure out um, why that conversation was frustrating or upsetting or sad, et cetera, and what we could have done differently. So the person was my cousin and the word to describe was tense. Tense? Ooh. Tense. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Tense. Mm -hmm. tense. Okay. Anyone else? I'll go. Um, the last person I spoke to about politics was my dad, um, and it was brief. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of how those conversations tend to go. Mm. <laughs> For me, this is hard because I I tend to avoid this. Mm -hmm subject in this conversation a lot um because it makes me uncomfortable especially if mm -hmm. I'm talking to someone who I know doesn't like if we don't see eye to eye it's just something I just avoid it um but I would say my fiance and I talk about certain things a lot in this realm and don't always agree on everything so it gets mm -hmm. it just, if I had to say a word I would say it gets complicated <laughs> <laughs> It's complicated. Yeah. What do you guys wish that conversation was or what do you wish like it could have been? As opposed to complicated and sort of brief or uncomfortable. I'll hop into, um, I had a series of conversations with my grandma over the summer, um, especially during all of the uprisings after George Floyd was murdered. And a lot of those conversations were just like, beating my head against the wall and mm -hmm. they have transitioned to being a lot more muted and I grew up in Texas where it's like the land of euphemisms so there's just like a lot of like the land of euphemisms <laughs> it is so like I'll say something pointed and direct and then it'll just be like totally sidestepped or you know like not acknowledged which is frustrating I think um like there was a time where we were having a dialogue but then it was like uh, there became a point where like there was no further engagement right like there it's no longer a dialogue it's like I'm not gonna answer your questions I'm just mm. gonna argue my side or whatever so that I think that has been interesting to kind of observe because I was like I'm here for this. Like, I'm willing to have the conversation. I'm willing to engage in the dialogue. So mm -hmm. I wanted to like show up to it, but there is a point where it just gets to be, I think too much. And then it, 
is like, okay, we're not, we're not moving forward. There is no more conversation to be had. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was, that was something that I wanted to add. Yeah. Less, less euphemism, more like actual meaningful conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Less euphemism, more substance. We like that. Okay. What else? I, I guess for me, like uh, those conversations with my dad, I, I feel like I just kind of wish they had a little bit more substance mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, I do value his opinion a lot. And especially as like someone who's like first generation American, mm -hmm. um, having a little bit more of that global conversation of that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd like to understand. And it also like, um, I, I think it also impacts the way we look at being American, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, like just Americanness and those political conversations. So I just wish they had like a little bit more substance and we could like do the deep dive instead of like the surface of like, I do not, I, I think this way, but I don't agree with this one aspect because of something very different of their understanding of like Americanness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Wow, that's profound. I never thought of it that way. Wow. See, look I think at that. that comes up. <laughs> yeah. That's really. And Kay, I think that wow. comes up too in like my conversations with, you know, like my, my family has been in the U.S. for a long time, right? Like we're kind of American mutts, but mm -hmm. the narrative and the history that like some members of my family have learned and like attached themselves to of this like idea of Americanness is like it that's the same it's probably different but it's the same issue that I come up against as well as like you're you've bought into a narrative that I don't agree with mm -hmm. these are the reasons why I don't agree with it mm -hmm. that's real and, and it's tied up in such a pretty bow most of the time. Like everybody's version of what American-ness is, is always tied up in this really pretty bow. And it's hard to, um, especially people that you care about to kind of like uh, start to like pick at that for them. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a, yeah, to unravel that for them is, is a big deal. You're unraveling a part of their identity in a way. Um, so that's why those conversations tend to be like that much more difficult. Yeah, that is a that is a, also a form of logical fallacy. Being reducing on like taking a reductionist approach to ideas and and reducing American to American equals A B C D. If you're not A B C D, then that's not American. Or being free means I get to do A, B, C, D. And if that, and if I'm not doing A, B, C, D, that means I'm not exercising my free will. And so we have to kind of be able to come, you have to show up to these conversations saying, you know, listen, let's expand our ideas. Let's, let's uh, think outside the box on this one. So, but very good. Love that. And for me personally, I, um, and just thinking about uh, the conversations that I have sometimes with my father, whom I love, um, very dearly, but is also, I sometimes uh, bum heads with uh, him because he is a Bible thumping Southern Baptist. Um, and that's, that's perfectly fine. That is who, that is who he is. I'm, I will, I can't change him. Also, wish, <laughs> would love to just get him to like, uh, sometimes I, I recognize there are some differences that exist, uh, like in the way he grew up on a farm in Halifax County, Virginia, and the way I grew up um, in the Baltimore area and in, and in Prince George's County too. So, um, so yeah, so we are going to, keeping all those thoughts in mind about how, um, about how we want to show up in these conversations and what we, and, and uh, how the converse, how some of the not good conversations <laughs> went and how we wish they could have went. Um, we are keeping those in mind when we build empathetic bridges. 
uh, by that I mean um, doing uh, doing these four things first acknowledging the other person mm -hmm. um, the other person's concern what is it they're saying um, uh, working to identify identify with them and what it is that they're saying at, at the or not just what they're saying, but why it is that they're saying it, because they're angry, because they're they're scared, because they're insecure, et cetera. Um, because uh, even though I don't know what it's like to, or I I wasn't raised on a farm. Let's get, <laughs> I was raised on, I, I um, have always been in, in Maryland. I, um, like, even though I'm like, that, why would you say that? I can, I'll, I can empathize with like, what it's like to feel, um, like confused or feel scared or feel frustrated in the same way that my that my dad does um because he is a person surprise surprise third um then anyways acknowledging identifying and connecting with that with the other person and um connecting with them and a moment in which that value came into your life too like to acknowledge the fact that like you are also a person and you are also human you are and you are understanding what is it they're saying and where it is that they're coming from too um so they can uh so instead of just like just having this conversation just to be right you're having this conversation actually like engage with the other person that you're talking to um it's important to be able to connect with them and help make sure that they realize that you're um you're hearing them too um and last but not least of course offer them a choice and give them an opportunity to see things from a different perspective. Uh, so this is um, like way different than insisting that, the, that uh, they have to think like you and that there's something wrong with them if they don't and, you, and the only thing that they can ever think is your ideas. <laughs> it's just giving you, perhaps sometimes um, it's better to give people the opportunity to think differently. So instead of saying, uh, why don't you think like that dad? Why don't you do that dad? Say, um, well dad, do you think it's possible that, that why don't you think about that? What would, um, what, how would you like it if you came with me to a blank event so you can meet other people who are blank? Then those, those sorts of things are a lot easier to be able to get people to want to step into these conversations voluntarily. Um, so that is a lot, but this is a lot. And so we're going to, uh, we're going to try it. We are going to try it. Let's see, but we're going to try it, it with, um, an example that perhaps is not scandalous. And then we'll, and then we can try again with, uh, with something that perhaps might be a little more juicy. Um, was, um, does anyone have a unpopular opinion? An unpopular, um, not necessarily scandalous opinion, but an unpopular one. For me, I actually like pineapple on pizza. I know. It's absolutely ridiculous, but look at me. <laughs> I don't like, I don't like bacon. <laughs> Oof. Wait, he tells me all the time he's like you're not american <laughs> i just never liked it i'll eat ham but i hate bacon why are my shots why am i, <laughs> I know, everyone's like why am I... Look at why am I... for admitting that you're very brave <laughs> it just means thank more you, everybody I'm else <laughs> thank you for <laughs> for being honest for being truthful look at you <laughs> Okay, I don't like bacon. <laughs> you don't like bacon, I do pineapple on pizza. Who else has a, has a not so scandalous opinion? Bacon. Okay, we're gonna go with bacon. <laughs> yeah, I feel so normcore. I feel like so like basic. I'm like, no, I like everything that everybody likes and I don't like things that other people don't like. I feel so boring. <laughs> I, I need more time. I, I'm sure I have one. I, I, uh, but yeah, let's go with the bacon one. I also, um, Vanessa, want to 
bring up Molly's question that she dropped in the chat. If you can work it into this last exercise, she says, mm. how do you connect with someone who isn't interested in building an empathetic bridge or listen to you or acknowledge your concerns, which is a fantastic question, which I think will possibly, not that I can read your mind, Vanessa, but maybe can be work, work inable into this last example. Um, Cause yes. I feel like it comes up a lot. Very much, very much. Okay, B, that is also <laughs> unpopular. <laughs> No cold ice cream messing up my warm apple crisp. <laughs> Not on my watch. <laughs> oh gosh, that is, that, is, that is quite a scandal. Okay. Um, let me think. Um, no, no a la mode, no bacon or pineapple on pizza. I had the I had the biggest emotion like visceral reaction to the bacon comment. I'm sorry, whoever. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but we're um, let's say we're going to try we're going to unpack the empathetic bridge with a conversation about bacon. <laughs> we are um, let's say we are hanging out. I say okay, let's let's make dinner. I want uh, I want to make this recipe with, um, with bacon. <laughs> the other person says, I don't like bacon. Uh, hmm. This man, and this, uh, this is actually a really good example because why? Because it does not fit neatly into the, into this little bridge. <laughs> And um, just like some conversations you have may not fit neatly and and cleanly into this little, like into these little four boxes, because um, it is actually okay that you don't like bacon, but I do. And so um, there are there is an instance in which like stepping stepping back and being honest with yourself and saying, uh, you know what. I want this person to feel included and I want this and I don't feel like um, having bacon in the salad that we're going to share is going to like not having bacon in the salad that we're going to share is going to ruin my day and so for me to say you know what I hear what you're saying I hear that you don't like bacon there have been moments of my life in which I don't in which in which a uh, food in which I didn't like a food too but Please put the bacon on your side. Like that <laughs> doesn't, um, we don't need to do all that. It's okay. Um, perhaps if, and there are some conversations that you're going to have with your family that uh, either, either it does not necessitate you um, pressuring them to think like you or they're just not interested in having that conversation. It is um, uh, sometimes, sometimes the other person may not be willing or may not be interested in having like this full, whole, like in-depth conversation with you. Um, in which, in which case you, you just have to be able to um, make a call as to whether or not this is something that it, the, the particular thing that you're talking about is um, an essential or a non-essential to you. Is it, is it okay for them to have a, for them to have diversity of thought and for them to think differently than you or <laughs> is this something that you feel like if they do not, if they do not think exactly this, then I can't be their friend or if they don't think exactly like this and I, then I don't want them to be my, to be my parent anymore. Um, so some, and like, while there are some things uh, that like, then I just uh, I don't agree with my father on personally. I think that he's sometimes I'm like dad. Uh, that's kind of that's a messy thing to say, but it's not going to. I'm like by themselves. Um, it is just an instance in which you just have to say, okay, am I? Uh, can I just agree with him, or can I just agree to disagree with this person? And sometimes the answer will be yes. <laughs> and that's. Um, but in thinking about a like more 
thinking about uh, this whole process in a more substantive conversation, perhaps, than, than the whole vaping concept. Um, I was just having, I was actually just having a conversation with one of my friends the other day about, I keep going back to the quarantine because it's the first thing that came up in my mind about the quarantine. Um, and he was making the point that um, we were having a conversation. He wanted to, uh, he wanted to hang out and go to a restaurant. I said, I'm, I'm not particularly interested in that because I don't feel like that's safe. And he said, um, well, Vanessa, we, well, Vanessa, I want to hang out and I don't, and I don't feel like it's fair for you to like expect me to stop my life because of the quarantine. Um, and I feel like we, and I feel like we live in a free country and we should be able to do what we want and stop being so afraid of everything. Um, and so in that, and so in that instance, like there's a lot, there's a lot going on there. Um, and so I have a couple of options um, available to me. So let's just kind of talk, talk this through. Example. I don't believe in the quarantine, in the idea of a quarantine slash social distancing. I think we should go out, do what we want, and practice common sense. <laughs> does anyone, does any brave, brave, brave soul want to take a step at how we could acknowledge what that person is saying <laughs> in this in this example based on what we just talked about about um like recognizing like how we want to show up with our values and how we don't want the conversation to to go and all those different things No one wants to try. Just acknowledge what he's just acknowledge the, the concern that he has and say this like recognize what the concern might be that he that he is bringing up. I see that you would like to get out of your house. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. All right, who wants to take a stab at identifying the value? It's important for social connection for your mental health. I get it, you know, yeah, exactly. Uh, I want to hang out with my friends too. <laughs> And that's true. That's actually, that's a real, that's a real thing. I want to go out. I want to like engage with human beings and not stare at my walls all day, you know? And so that, um, <laughs> there, uh, well, that's, act, but that actually, um, whoever made that comment, this is, uh, This is actually closer to a connection. This is actually closer to the connecting idea. Um, but the what is the core thing? What is the core feeling that this person is that this person um, is expressing right now? This is actually kind of the harder the harder step of this uh, bridge, always for me, trying to. Trying to see things from the other from the other person's eyes and trying to see from 
their perspective. Like they feel boxed in. They feel isolated. They feel frustrated. I'm actually going to, I think I just answered my question. Um, frustration, isolation. So, um, now we're going to offer my friend a choice and give him the opportunity to see things from a different perspective. Um, no, not bullying him into staying staying in his house, not uh, calling him mean names or telling him that he's that he's uh, wrong for wanting or feeling isolated or feeling frustrated or he's wrong for wanting to like see the light of day. Um, we're going to give him an opportunity to see things differently <laughs> instead. So uh, what is one way that we can do that or say that? Come on. Okay. I don't know how to deliver something like that without bullying. <laughs> could, this, could this be like a, you know, if the person is suggesting going out to a restaurant or something, could it then be, you know, I'm not comfortable, but I still would like to see you. Can we meet and hang out at a park and catch up there or... Mm -hmm you know, offering another suggestion, like, hey, can mm -hmm. we connect on a phone call for, like, I don't know, like, I'm not comfortable mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm putting that, it up that's, a, that's good. Um, giving the other person, um, like, instead of saying no, no, moreover, right, I'll right. never hang out with you again, or no, and also, like, delete my number. So you <laughs> right, like, no, I can't believe you're even suggesting such a thing. Yeah, go away. No, Instead, <laughs> you know I'm not I'm not comfortable with that yet, but would still love to chat and catch up and see you. Can we meet up for a walk instead? Or I don't I don't know whatever that would look like. But why don't we meet up for a walk instead? That's great. That's a that's a um that is a good way to. Um, like acknowledge what the other in giving them that option also like definitely acknowledges like what it is that they like want to get out of this conversation like they want to be able to like engage with other human beings they want to be able to leave their house they want to be able to like keep maintaining their relationships and things and so that's and so that's listening to the, the needs of the other person and making sure that you're like still paying attention to that thing um but also it is also it is um, very important to um, bring to this conversation or for them a different perspective on the issue or different perspective on the idea. Um, and so, if I were and so, what well, if I were having this come? This is what I actually <laughs> did. I um, I brought up to him the um, then something that he really, something that he really values, like in his, um, in his family and like in his uh, ideas and political beliefs is um, the concept of like self-determination. And he believes that uh, like we shouldn't, like we should all be responsible for ourselves ultimately, um, which I'm, um, and I feel, and I feel the same. We're all responsible. I, I believe that we're all responsible for ourselves, but I also feel like our, like, um, but I said to him, uh, I can see why you said that. I understand, like, I understand it is true. We do, like, we do need to be responsible for ourselves. But um, in order for us to uh, be responsible citizens, in order for us to be, like, a good, um, to contribute well to the public health crisis, 
instead of um, instead of adding instead of nor for it add to the solution instead to the problem. That's what I said. There we go. Look at you, mess. In order for us to add to the solution instead to the problem, we need to make sure we are doing our best to add to the public health solution and therefore making taking steps to add to the public health instead of just focusing on us and just focusing on on your life. And sometimes it's, and sometimes you we get so focused on our own lives and the and what your life looks like, what you want to do, what you don't want to do, we miss out on how your life is impacting the, the broader picture of things. And so that is that was a that was an and it was a pretty fruitful conversation. It got it got really deep, I think. Bless his heart. If you were wondering how it went, we no, we didn't no, we didn't go out for dinner. We <laughs> We went to we went through a Wendy's barbecue. Through it was very fun. I enjoy Wendy's. Um, so the choice I gave him in that instance was consider this: even though we're responsible. Try to move this up. Uh, responsible for ourselves, we all are contributing to the public. or worse. So that's kind of, that is, that is how we handle the situation. Now, um, we're actually a little bit over time and uh, not every single thing that you, that you say in your life is going to fit neatly into, into four boxes, of course. Not everything is going to be like super easy for you to just like roll off the tongue with, uh, with cute little like quips and sayings and tricks and things. Because um, we can all be be Oprah or Yama Van Sant, but at the same time, like uh, in your running through these four things in your mind, if nothing else, uh, acknowledging what they're saying, identifying the, the value and why it is that they're saying it connecting with that person and try and making sure they you see them and they see you um, and also offering them a choice to see things from different perspectives and offering them a choice to kind of uh, meet in the middle those four things acknowledge identify connect offer choice uh, make these sorts of conversations just not much easier and make you want to kill your family just a little bit less and make you want to like <laughs> actually like keep keep talking on the phone with them instead of like having it be this really weird awkward uncomfortable mm -hmm. thing in which you are um letting your assumption letting your assumptions of what they think or letting your assumptions of what you expect them to think and what you expect them to feel um speak for them so thank you so much vanessa i speaking for myself and my family dynamics individually, this framework to building those bridges is so important um, and having these in my back pocket as I head um, into these conversations undoubtedly during the holiday season um, is so valuable. So thank you so much for putting all of that together and sharing your wisdoms. Um, I honestly think you should host a second class in the spring semester to like follow up and be like, how did the holidays go? Um, also, I feel like you could talk for hours about your campaign experience. I would love to hear more about that. Um, but thank you so much for, for this class and this session. I, I look forward to continuing these conversations. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, this uh, Vanessa session will be featured on the College Town YouTube channel, and I will follow up with a survey tomorrow, hitting all of your inboxes, uh, value your feedback and your time and your energy. And with that, I will 
end the Zoom meeting. Round of applause for Vanessa. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Happy holidays to all. Happy awkward conversations with family to all. And uh, yeah, enjoy enjoy the rest of the, the holiday season. Thank you. Thank guys. you. Um, I took 14 extra minutes, but thank you so much for valuable. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Have a good one.